Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today, we'll be doing an unboxing and review video for the 1-6 scale Spider-Gwen figure from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse by Hot Toys. This is an exciting one for me personally, because since Hot Toys Spider-Man debut back in 2011, this marks the first time a female spider will be joining the lineup. The death of Spider-Man's first love, Gwen Stacy, had been a long-standing story arc for the titular hero. But around 2015, an alternate reality rendition of the character started to gain traction. In this reality, not only was Peter Parker the one who died, Gwen Stacy was also the one who took on the mantle as the Spider-Woman herself. This twist lends itself perfectly into the 2018 animated feature, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where alternate realities collide, giving us six spider heroes for the price of one. Released in 2021, even the packaging is brimming with style. The slanted edges and vibrant colors are motifs that are lifted straight from the movie, and it's a telltale sign that we're in this for a ride. Starting with the double head sculpts, I think the likeness on both are excellent. The beautiful shape, texture, and shine on the unmasked hair sculpts are examples of why Hot Toys is the king in this hobby. The hooded head is completely sculpted, which is absolutely necessary because fabric hoods and masks tend to be really messy at this scale. Plus, the entire head is affixed to the hood, so it'll never bend out of shape. There's also a folded hood for the unmasked head sculpts, which complements the shoulder profile. So the only real nit I have is that, in the film, Gwen's complexion is pale but vibrant, and her hair is more of that creamy beige color, whereas the paint app on this head sculpt is rather tan and flat, and the hair turned out to be this darker honey caramel kind of blonde. I don't think this hurts the presentation all too much, but this is definitely not characteristic of Hot Toys' usual attention to details. As for the costume, the reflective patterns on the white sections are downright satisfying to behold. This shiny pattern is flawlessly consistent, even for sculpted bits like the hood, mask, and hands. The flat sheen on the black portions are just as beautiful. The tight tolerance on the seams allow for an unbroken web pattern across the arms, though the seam itself is a little bit gnarly on the right arm for my copy. I'm gonna chalk this one up to bad luck, and hopefully this won't happen with yours. The ribbon strings on the ballerina shoes are actually printed onto the suit, leaving the sculpted shoes to be externally attached as a permanent fixture. The articulations are pretty spectacular. Gwen's lanky physique is very faithful to the art style of the film. Even the muscle definitions on her calves did not go amiss. Despite having a sculpted hood, the neck articulation actually doesn't suffer all that much. This thing can do basically everything the unmasked head sculpt could do. From a relatively neutral position, the ratchet shoulder takes about 5 clicks to reach maximum backswing, about 9 clicks to reach maximum upswing. With an equally robust outswing, the elbow bends and bicep swivels are otherwise fairly ordinary. The suit is also flexible enough to allow for a pretty good ab twist and crunch. The legs take about 5 clicks to reach maximum outswing, and they're then followed by the once again fairly standard up and down swings, thigh swivels, and ratchet double jointed knees. It's a bummer that the sculpted shoes don't allow Gwen to do those ballerina toe curls, but the relatively unhindered ankle joints do make up for this a little bit. Before moving on, I do want to note that, like all other Spider-Man figures that came before, leaving Gwen in a dynamic pose for too long will damage the suit. It's just an unfortunate reality for stretchy fabrics on this scale that we have to deal with, but I am happy to find that the elasticity on this suit is amazing. Every pose that you see in this video was held for no more than 20 minutes, and as you can see, I did not go easy. The wrinkles looked really awful when I initially unwound the figure, but they all disappeared after 15 minutes of being left alone in the neutral pose. So if you want to get Gwen in a pose for a few quick snaps, then by all means have at it. But do make sure you don't leave her in a pose for too long, even for mild ones, and give the suit some time to bounce back before posing again. As for the accessories, we'll get to the fun ones after plowing through some of the usual stuff that comes with a typical Spider-Man release, such as this paperback physics textbook with actual pages you can leave through. We also have this cute little pocket mirror. Sadly, both of these are just nice-to-haves, as Gwen never had the chance to use these while she's all suited up. What she did use was her smartphone. The screen has that same selfie that she took with Miles on the bus. This thing just looks right in her hands. And then there's the prop fabric mask, with the same beautiful shiny pattern as the suit. But seeing the seams on this thing just makes me so glad that we got a sculpted mask instead. 
There are four pairs of interchangeable magnetic eyes. They snap on and off really easily, thanks to the edges that are slightly protruded from the mask. There are a lot of combinations for mixing and matching here. And since Gwen's web shooters are concealed, there's an extra pair of web shooter hand pose, with a base for mounting the web strings. Oh and speaking of which, the web strings are fairly typical as well, with two variations for the mid-swing setup, and another two for shooting out of the hands. We also have a dynamic display base, with the colorful splashes from the Dimension Collider as background. And let's be real here, only this kind of display stand can do the figure justice. But the absolute highlight for me was this cardboard backdrop. The lively burst of colors and the onomatopoeic text just perfectly embodies the film, and more importantly, the comic books that inspired this whole thing. And last but not least, we also have a fully sculpted Peter Porker as Spider-Ham. As per expected of a Hot Toys release, the likeness here is once again excellent. The web pattern on the suit is fully textured, and it's even got a somewhat soft curly tail. The pose here is him offering a handshake to the Spider Gang after washing his hands. I guess he just didn't bother drying them, and definitely not because of the traumatic experiences that comes with every hand dryer machine. This is also why his display stand has some painted water spots, and of course Spider Ham would have his own backdrop as well. For the size comparison, here we have the advanced suit version from Marvel's Spider-Man on PlayStation 4 and the MCU Homecoming version, both are also by Hot Toys. Gwen is definitely on the short side, but that's accurate to her character, since she's around 14 to 16 years old in the movie, and all the adults in the Spider Gang are much taller than her, so I do hope Hot Toys keep the height consistent for the upcoming Miles Morales figure. So there you have it, the 1-6 scale Spider-Gwen figure by Hot Toys. I'm very glad that this release came at a time when Hot Toys has somewhat matured with its Spider-Man line. The sculpted hood and mask is exactly what's needed to make this work, and they nailed it. The paint app on the unmasked head could be a little better, but the excellent articulations, the brilliant elastic suit with its intricate reflective patterns, and the psychedelic backdrop makes for a formidable female spider to add to your display. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.